Hello YouTube, I hope your day is going well. Today we're going to talk about the Word 2016 exam and we're looking at the domain called Create and Manage Documents. Overall this accommodates for 25 to 30 percent of the overall exam and this domain's pretty big. Let me go ahead and throw a graphic up of what this domain covers. There are over 25 different items that you could be tested on from this domain and it has five different subdomains. In this first video, we're going to talk about the create a document, navigate through a document, and format a document. Let's go ahead and jump into Word. We're talking about the Word 2016 exam. And we're looking at the domain called create and manage documents, which accounts for about 25 to 30 percent of the overall exam. We're going to look at the subdomain called create a document. The first thing it tells us that we need to be able to do is to create a blank document. If Word's not open already, you would want to go down to the bottom and select the icon or go through the start menu to do that. But if Word's already open, in order to open up a new Word document, we would click file. New. And then we would just click this new document, which would open up a brand new blank Word document. This domain also tells us that we need to be able to create a blank document using a template. And everything in here is a template. You can also search through this or if you have a saved template already in there, it might ask you to load that. But both create a new blank document and create a new document from template would be found in this section. This domain tells us that we also need to be able to open up a PDF in Word for editing. There are a few ways to do this, but with Word open, we'd go to the open folder. And then what we're going to do is browse to our documents folder where the file is. And then from here, you'd want to select your PDF file. So we'll go ahead and select area codes by state and then we'll click open. And it gives me this dialog box telling me that Word's going to convert our PDF to an editable Word document. And it says that this might take a while and it gives me some other information. What I want to do is click OK. And then what Word did was open that PDF in a new Word document. Let's go back to our original file. I'll be honest with you, creating a blank document, creating a blank document from a template and opening a PDF in Word for editing, you most likely aren't going to see that on the certification exam just because of the exam format. Now, you could see it, but chances are probably not. The last thing in this subdomain, it tells us that we need to be able to do is to insert text from a file or an external source. This is something in the subdomain you're probably going to see to do that. The first thing you want to do is put your cursor in your document where you want the information to go. So if it said under the first paragraph in Title II, you'd put your cursor there. Or if it says at the end of the document, you would just click in that last blank line. And then what we want to do is go to the insert tab here at the top. And we're in the text group here. For this, you're probably going to be asked to do this in two ways. The first way is to insert like an Excel file. So we're going to go ahead and click this object drop down box and we're going to select object. In this dialog box, what we're going to do is click create from file. And then we're going to go ahead and click browse. And what we're going to do is map to the folder where our file is located. And for this, we'll go ahead and select our Excel file. And we'll click OK. And notice it went ahead and brought that in. The other thing it might ask you to do is to insert some type of text document. So let's go ahead and look at doing that. We're on the insert tab again. We're in the text group and we're going to click the object drop down. And this time we're going to select text from file. And for this, we're going to go ahead and select our Word document here. And what this is going to do is just import this Word document right underneath where we had our cursor selected. So now this document is seven pages instead of just the one page it was originally. We're looking at the subdomain called navigate through a document. The first thing it tells us that we need to be able to do is to find text within the document. To do that, we want to be on the home tab in the editing group. We'll click find or we can use control F to open up the navigation pane. In the navigation part, we can type in a word that we are looking for. So for example, if I type in lorem. It pulls up nine instances that this is found. I'm just going to randomly select one within the document. And notice it went ahead and highlighted that for me in this document. I'm going to close out of the navigation pane here. This section also tells us that we need to be able to move to a specific location or object in a document. To do that, we're still on the home tab. We're in the editing group, and this time we're going to click the drop down for find and select go to. 
in this go to section, we have a lot of things that are important to us, such as we could change the page number by just typing in a page. But some things you might be asked to look for are things like bookmarks, and it loads those bookmark sections here. Maybe it's comments or footnotes. You should be familiar with this in case it asks you to go to a specific place within the document. We're going to close out of this. This domain also tells us that we need to be able to insert hyperlinks within a document. For this, we'll go ahead and select this text. What I normally do is right click on things to get things done, and I could go to link here and then click insert link, or you could go to the insert tab here at the top. And in the links group, we want to click this drop down for insert link. Now, this dialog box is important because you have the ability to insert a link to a specific file on your computer, or you can type in a web address down here. Or within this document, you have some sections here that you could link to, such as this bookmark that I have here. You also have create a new document, but you also have an email address. So if you wanted to hyperlink to an email address, you'd have that ability to do so. We'll go ahead and go to the existing file. And for this, we're just going to go ahead and type in www.youtube.com and we'll click OK. And now that's a hyperlink. I want to also note that you can hyperlink things such as pictures. Should you want to remove the hyperlink, you would right click. And select remove hyperlink or you could go up to link insert link and then click remove link. And now you've removed the hyperlink. This domain tells us that we need to be able to insert bookmarks. We're on the insert tab and where we want to look here is links again. Now, when you're creating a bookmark, it is important what kind of text you select. So like right here. My cursor is just slashing in front of the word. And so if I create a bookmark, that's where it's going to land if I select that bookmark. Whereas if I selected the entire title here and then created a bookmark, when I go to that section, it will come back with this selected. And so in your question, you want to make sure if it just wants the bookmark in front of or if you select your title when you create it. But it's as simple as clicking this once you've made your selection. And for this, we'll go ahead and type in title. Now, if you are creating bookmark, you can't have a space in your name. Notice that when I start to type the next thing, the add button disappears. So you would probably need to insert some type of underscore for this. It's just the first title. So we'll keep it as title and we'll click add. We're looking at the subdomain called formatted document. The first thing it tells us that we need to be able to do is to modify our page setup. To do that, I want to go to the layout tab here at the top. And I'm looking here at the page setup group within this group there are a lot of features that I could be asked to do, such as changing the margins of the document. Now, there are quite a few predefined ones, but I also have the ability to change them to a custom set. We also have the option of changing our page orientation so we can change it from portrait to landscape or vice versa. You have the option of changing the page size. You can add columns here. So if I wanted to do this. I could. And now this page has three columns. I can add breaks within our document. I'll go ahead and put my cursor right in front of title two. I'll go ahead and add a page break here. My text went to a different page. Now, let me go ahead and tell you about this. It's on the home tab. It's called the show and hide marks. If I click that notice, it shows me here that there's a page break. My students I've seen add literally five different types of breaks within their document and not even realize it. With this button enabled, you can see the different formattings that are applied to this document. So I want to encourage you to try and remember about that feature within Word. You have the line numbers, you have hyphenation, whether you want it automatic or manual or some hyphenation options. But you also want to be familiar with this page setup dialog box because it gives you just a few more features in the different sections that we just talked about. Should you need to dig just a little bit deeper, we'll click cancel here. The next thing it tells us that we need to be able to do is to apply document themes. To do that, we want to go to the design tab here at the top. And in this section here, we want to click the themes drop down. And on the exam, if you're asked to do something like this, it will tell you which one to choose. And as I hover over that, you can notice some subtle differences to things like the text. So we'll go ahead and just select Berlin here. And then we have the option of changing some of the document style sets, and that can be found here. We'll click the more button. Maybe I would like this shaded notice it just went ahead and it changed the title there. As I hover through, I see different changes to some of the formats of this document. You also have the option of changing the color sets and the fonts here. 
This subdomain also tells us that we need to be able to insert headers and footers. To do that, what we want to do is go to the insert tab here at the top, and we want to go to our header and footer section. And then if we click the header drop down here, there's a lot to choose from. So if it tells you a specific one, you want to select that. But you also have the option of selecting edit header. Once I click in this section, I have the header and footer tools design tab. And in this section, I have a lot of different sections that I can manually put. If I need to quickly get to the footer, which can sometimes be complicated, I can select go to footer and it will drop my cursor to the footer section. Just like the header section, they have some predefined ones that they've already created. So if it tells you to put slice in, that's easy enough to do. You can just select that. This domain also tells us that we need to be able to insert page numbers. Right here, we have page numbers. They have top of page, bottom of page, in the page margins. And then you also have current position. So wherever your cursor is at, it will place that number. To get out of the header footer, you can click the close or you can just double click out and it will close out of the header and footer. And then the last thing this subdomain tells us that we need to be able to do is to format page background elements. Let's go back to the design tab here at the top and where we want to be is the page background group. And it could ask you to do things like a border here and it'll give you some settings like a shadow. We could do some dotted lines. We can change the weight here to three. We can change the color here to this orange accent one and click OK. And it went ahead and placed that within our document. We could also be asked to change the page color here or maybe add some fill effects. So for this, we'll go ahead and select this green. And then one other thing it could ask you to do is to insert a watermark. So we'll go ahead and click this. And there's some predefined ones in here, but you could also be asked to insert a custom watermark. If it does, this dialog box will open up and you could be asked to put in a picture or some text. And then if you select picture, a dialog box will open up so you can map to where your image is located. We'll click cancel here. Thank you for watching this video. My hope always as I create new content is that my viewers feel better able to carry out tasks in Microsoft. If you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know that you liked it. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. That way you get a notification when I release my next video. Do you have a suggestion on a video that I should make? Leave a comment below. Let me know what you want me to create. That way I can better help you.